Well, good morning, everybody. How's it going? It is uh, Tuesday, and this is Dylan Talks Tone, and this is live from the bench. This is a new thing that I want to try to do from time to time. I'm hoping every Tuesday at noon Eastern time in the Americas, uh, we're going to do some kind of practical on the bench repair stuff. We're going to learn uh, today. We're going to talk about soldering. Today we're going to talk about soldering as it pertains to get building guitars, repairing guitars, replacing pots, jacks, that sort of thing. So what I have here is a Dylan Custom Guitars Tele that we're building right now. And the pickups are, are physically installed in the guitar. And we've got the wires sticking out there. And then we've got a pre-wired uh, control plate that I've already put together. So when you go to dylantoxtone.com, you can get a couple of different things there. You can get the uh, individual components. So like, you know, a three-way switch and pots and caps and output jack, right? Or uh, we can pre-assemble this stuff for you and then you can get it like this and then you just put it in the guitar with a couple of solder joints. So that's as far as we've gotten with this particular build. And so today what we're gonna do is move that camera over here and then we're gonna kinda get up close and personal and we're gonna do some how-to stuff. We're gonna talk about some um, soldering tips and tricks and that sort of stuff. And I'm gonna do something real quick right now. I got my laptop here this week um, because it's easier for me to see comments on my laptop and questions as we go. I really don't know why it does that. So, boom, that's shared. I've got my live dashboard here. Let me refresh this so we've got everything. So if you're watching this in replay, which most of you probably will be watching it in replay, that's the plan. We're gonna do this every Tuesday at noon Eastern time. And um, let's see, I don't understand. Oh, here it is. Live stream, stream now. So I'm using this schedule streaming thing uh, for the first time this way. So give me one second to get over there. And then now I can see your comments and stuff. Um, and one thing I want to mention right away is cool. So we've got some people on. Awesome. Uh, in the comments to this video, there is going to be a link and it is going to be kind of a shopping list of all the basic tools that we're using today to do the work on this guitar. They are Amazon links. Every time you use one of those links, I make like five cents or something, but every little bit helps and I do appreciate it um, because that's what kind of helps all this keep going. So uh, there's gonna be some, some a whole list on there. You can actually click on that and then we email it to you. It's pretty cool. Um, so let's talk about soldering. Today we're gonna talk about uh, heat. We're gonna talk about what soldering actually is uh, versus what it's not, what a lot of people think it is and what it's not. And once we get that concept down, it's really going to help us to be able to make this look easy. Because a lot of people, will, you know, they'll watch these videos or they'll watch people on the internet and they'll say, soldering looks easy. Um, you make it look so easy, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's not that difficult. But there's a couple of basic concepts that we want to have. So with that being said, we're going to get a little shaky because we're actually doing this old school with one camera. So give me a minute as we get this set. Yeah, this is gonna look sweet. So let's talk about this. Uh, let's talk about this setup that we've got here. So first of all, we've got our Weller. Let's go ahead and turn that guy on. We've got our Weller uh, soldering iron that is actually in our uh, list of things that we use. Um, I typically put it on about three and a half, okay? This is only $40 on Amazon right now, so it's a really sweet deal. And then I use this Kester solder, which is actually also on that shopping list, um, okay? 
Now, I, I will tell you that my real soldering iron that I use 99% of the time is over here. I saw somebody say, yeah, that's pretty old school. Well, that is the big daddy, and that's the one I use every day for work. But I am going to use the same one that I'm recommending to you so that you can understand heat settings, so that you can understand time, understand all that stuff. That way we're working on the same page with the same tools. It makes the how-to part of this a lot easier and a lot more straightforward, okay? Um, and then another thing I do, and then another thing I do, all right, this is gonna be interesting. So I'm gonna tell you another thing that I've done. I bought, you're gonna love this. I bought a silicone mat off of Amazon. This is not on the tool list. I can put a link to it in the description of the video. And I cut a hole in it, the same size as the hole that we're working on. And I did that because solder tends to burn and spatter and splatter. And you don't wanna splatter your finish on your guitar. So this holds up to about 400, 500 degrees. You can actually bake with it. It's a baking mat. And then I cut that hole in it. And then I also cut this round hole for the switch uh, hole on a Les Paul. So it will, hold, it will cover up a whole guitar and it keeps everything from getting spattered on. And I know it's kind of cheesy, but if I don't put something on there, people will be like, you're going to spatter on your guitar. If I do put something on there, people are going to be like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So we can't really win, but we try to do the right thing. So let's talk about soldering. I want to talk a bit about, and as you guys have ideas for these videos, I want you to leave them in the comments. All right. So let's see, question about solder. The black and white leads on a humbucker. I've had trouble with the coil wire breaking when connecting them to four conductor wire. That is a whole nother deal. We're gonna, we can deal with that on another day because that's a completely different concept um, and reason. So we're, what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about the installation of components in a guitar, okay? So here we have this is really hard to do on the camera. So here we have our solder tip, and you notice that I'm using the normal, they call it the screwdriver or um, eighth inch blade solder tip. Now, one of the things I want to talk about with soldering, and let's get an old pot. We'll grab, it's not an old pot, but whatever, it's just a pot that we've got laying here. Um, Soldering is not welding, okay? A lot of people think that soldering is welding, but what you're actually doing is you're actually creating a chemical, it's more of a chemical bond than it is a, a, than it is a weld, okay? And so the soldering iron, when it heats the solder, it, two things happen with this particular solder. There's rosin in here, and that's like a liquid inside here with the solder, because this is rosin core, and it will actually clean. See this brown stuff right here next to this solder joint? That's rosin. See it melt? Rosin is basically kind of like tree sap. But one of the things it does is it allows heat transfer. So when we solder stuff, what we're working on here is to be able to get heat to transfer between two points. So we want heat to be here, and we want heat to be on the component that we're about to solder to it. Um, now it takes more heat to heat up the back of a pot than it does to take up to heat the back of a cap, or you know, a, a cap leg, for instance. But literally, this is how easy this should be. So our our iron is hot. We'll go on a point that is not, not has no solder to it. We'll put it there. And it's that easy. Now, a lot of people will hit me with, well, you should sand the back of a pot. You should blah, 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 blah. If, so if it is clean and the solder is good and you have good heat transfer, then 
it then you have no issue. Now, if we were to take the corner of this, like this, and try to, to solder with it, see it doesn't transfer as fast, and I'm just making a hot spot because I don't have any transfer of heat between the components. This part is staying hot and the pot is not heating up. So therefore I don't have good transfer of heat between the two components. Now if I turn it on its side and use the width of it, look at that, I didn't even have to add any solder and we made a good solder joint or we, we made a good solder pool, okay? So it's all about heat transfer. That's why that nice little wide thing is there. Now I'll show you something. On my iron, I've just been doing this for so many years that on my iron, I, I do have a point. This comes from my days of um, doing cell phones and stuff. But when I, I, even when I solder with this iron, I lay it on its side, and this isn't on right now, but I lay it on its side like this, and I get the heat transfer across. So if you have a pointed tip like this, don't put it down on the, don't put it down like this. Use the side of it, well here, Let's turn this baby on and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Hear that little ball bearing that rattles? Basically what that does is uh, if I leave this for five minutes, it cools down to 400 degrees so it doesn't burn my tip. So watch, if we take just the tip of this and we add some solder to it. Uh, let's get this hot. Let's just make sure our tip is hot. Okay, so our tip is hot. Now, if we, if we use the tip of this iron, there's no heat transfer from this item to this item. Therefore, see it just pool up on the tip of the iron? It doesn't transfer to the component. Now, if we lay it on its side and we allow the heat to transfer, it takes a little bit longer because my tip is smaller. But there you go. Now we have good heat transfer on the side. See, I could go to all these other, see I can pool all these other solder joints. Now let's talk about that as well. Let's talk about another thing. Let's talk about, you go onto an old solder, you go onto an old pot. So let's take, let's grab something that was already assembled before, okay? So now we have, so we're in a guitar and we're repairing it. And this wasn't done very long ago, so it might not be applicable. But sometimes you can't get this to heat up, or you're trying to, you know, you're trying to like disconnect this from the back of the pot, and you can't get it to heat up. That's because you're having a hard time getting heat transfer from one item to the other. So what you want to do is just add a little bit of new solder to get that to start to pool and then that heat transfer begins to travel through the entire pool of solder and it instantly happens, okay? So this is about heat transfer between items. So when we are soldering a cap on the back of a pot, we want heat to transfer equally from here to here. Now it's never really gonna happen 100% equally because this item is so small that it heats up quickly. This item heats up more slowly and that makes it uh, a little bit difficult. So what we need to do is one of two things. Heat this first and then lean over onto the top of that one and heat that up. We don't want to overheat the leg of this capacitor because we could do damage to the capacitor internally. Um, one little uh, kind of tip to help with that is you can take an alligator clip and clip it on the leg right up by the body of the cap before you start soldering it. And when you do this, uh, this will dissipate the heat through that alligator clip to where it doesn't come up into the body of the cap and it allows you to get this hot enough uh, to, to, to bond. So if you put an alligator clip right here, it'll protect this from getting damaged. These are pretty, pretty, um, Orange drops are really, really durable. That's one of the reasons. So when you look at an orange drop cap, the heat rating on it is that's one of the reasons why they're so durable, why they work good for guitar stuff, because you don't overheat them. You do, you know, you don't, you don't overheat the cap. But there are some caps like paper and oil caps, as well as uh, old tropical fish clay caps and stuff are very easy to damage. 
So, you see we've done all of that here. We've got everybody hooked up. Everybody's looking pretty good here. Let's move this camera just a little bit. I'm gonna scan back through here and let's look for some questions here really fast. I just wanna make sure we got everybody because I'm talking and chatting and things are going and I wanna make sure that we miss, don't miss anybody. Well, looks like we're pretty good. Awesome. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and speak up at any time. Okay, so let's go ahead and install this wiring harness in this guitar using what we just learned, and we'll do a live demo of what we were just talking about, okay? Uh, now, this is going to be a bit of a trick because this wire came out a little shorter than I wanted to. So on my pickups, on Dylan Talks Tone pickups, the humbucker, the red goes to the switch, the green and the black are the center link, which is what you use to do the coil split with. So that'll get twisted together. And then our white and our braid are the chassis ground. So those will get twisted together. So let's go ahead and do the thing. Now I'm going to see if I can do this on camera without causing issues. It doesn't look, it's not as smoky in the room as it looks on camera. It's kind of weird. Sorry, you know what? I need to put my hat on backwards. Hang on one second. I'm realizing that as I'm talking to you, my um the bill of my cap is bonking the microphone. Now this needs to be done as quickly as possible because we don't want to overheat all the insulation on these wires because these wires can get overheated and melt back and that sort of stuff. All right, so now that we've got those two done, oops, sorry. Where is I had around here somewhere. There it is. A piece of shrink tubing. Put that down on there, and then I'll show you something really fun. Over here on my expensive, fancy soldering station, I have a hot air gun. And so that pump that you hear running is, is making hot air. It's actually for working on circuit, circuit boards and stuff. But what I use it for is a really sweet and fast heat shrink device. So this is our coil split. So that's just going to get kicked out of the way. I'll trim that down in a minute. Get some more light on this situation, shall we? All right. So we'll go ahead and clip this off the top. Now this is going to be our ground that's going to go to our one side this is going to go to our switch so we're talking about heat transfer and when we're soldering the easiest way to accomplish heat transfer when you're soldering is make sure that your wires especially small ones like this are pre-tinned because they don't have a lot of surface area that's very messy hang on it's hard to do this with a camera in front of me so I'm trying to give you guys like a point of view shot and uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult with the placement of everything. All right. And the other thing is, hang on. Literally, this is a learning. When I used to go live, I used to do this quite a bit differently. And so 
learning to do it a little different today is. All right, let's hook up our neck pickup. Nice mechanical bond there. It's that easy. It should literally just be a touch. And then we come over here to the back of our pot. Now I already have a nice uh, ground pad there, but we're gonna make that a little bit bigger because we need two more wires to hook to that area. So we'll make that nice and big, make it easy, pretty clean. While we're at it, let's go ahead and take both of our grounds. So this is our bridge pickup ground. Now to do this, you could do this really quickly. All right, there's our bridge pickup ground. And there's our neck pickup ground. All right. Now, let's take our bridge pickup wire, hot wire, bring him over. Now these wires are pre-tinned already, so it makes it a whole lot easier. Transfer the heat from both components at the same time. You gotta be careful on a switch to not use so much um, solder that it actually will drip down into the switch because you could actually jam the switch up. How long does it take to solidify? Uh, let's see if we can demonstrate that. In fact, we'll demonstrate that and then we'll also, I will show you another little trick here. Uh, one of the other things that happens a lot of times, so we'll use your question, um, we'll use your question and we'll use this little demonstration to, to answer that question, okay? Um, you wanna know how long it takes for the solder to solidify. The other thing we need to learn how to do is how do we do a butt joint with a wire. Um, a lot of people will take a wire and they'll twist it together. That'll be too huge, it adds resistance, although very negligible. But this is how we do it. We pre-tin both sides, okay? It helps to have like a little helping hands for this. I'm actually doing this kind of the hard way. We make them overlap. Sorry, I have to watch what I'm doing here. We make them overlap about this much. Now. You are asking, sir, how long it takes to solidify. That long. Now, I wouldn't let that fly because there's a little lump in it, and I don't like that. And that's how long it would take to solidify. Bingo. That's it. Literally seconds. Now, if it's on a big surface like this, it'll take a little bit longer because you're waiting for that whole surface to cool below the melting point of the solder, okay? This is all about heat transfer. Once the heat is transferred from one component to the other, the solder will stick. You know, it will be a good solder joint. Once, if you move it before the larger component cools below the melting point, you could have a bad solder joint. So what I tell people is, make sure that when you do this, you move it, um, you, you make sure that you do not move it. Like doing it in my hand like that, most people aren't gonna do that. In fact, ow, here I am looking at the camera, not looking at the, in fact, most people wouldn't because it heats up the tips of your thumbs so bad. All right, so, and there's another couple other things I would do here that we'll do off camera later, but basically I need to 
make sure that the ground wire for that pickup doesn't touch anything in there. So we would probably throw some insulation around that area. See, we don't want that ground wire touching against the switch. It's probably okay, but probably okay is not good enough for me. So, but I'll fix it later um, instead of bore you with that situation. You notice there's no shielding in here. There's no need to shield your control cavity on your guitar if you don't need the if you don't need the uh, square inches of, of shielding. Bam! So there we are. Now let's move over here to a different style of solder joint, and that would be. Sorry about the shaking, guys. Literally, it's really close quarters. I'm trying to get you guys the best shot, but then at the same time actually do the work <laughs> so all right so we're going to talk about doing an output jack this is probably one of the most uh, this might be one of the most requested things like how to solder an output jack because it's one of the things that wears the most you know on a guitar so man i'm sorry about kicking that camera like that Should have grabbed my other cutters. They work better. Okay. On a joint like this, I like to make sure that we have a good mechanical joint as well. Uh, what I mean by mechanical joint is um, when you saw the back of the pot and we soldered the wire to the side of the pot, that was not a mechanical joint. That was strictly a 100% solder joint like this. A mechanical joint is when you can put the wire through there and literally have a mechanical, you know what I mean? The, it goes through the hole and it, it grabs it there. Plus then you have all the solder as well. So these move around so much and can get pulled on and all that sort of stuff. We really want to make sure so for those of you that have never replaced one, remember that the outside of your, uh, the outside, this area, is the sleeve, and the little tip of it touches right here. So it's very easy to visually see. So if this is the tip, you kind of follow that metal piece around, and you see that this is the one that hooks to this, even though it doesn't look like it, it's, you can see it in there. This one hooks to this, so that makes this the tip. And you can see that the center one goes to the shaft of where the plug would come through. And that makes that the, the sleeve, okay? So sleeve is always ground. For those of you that have done this backwards by accident. Oh, of course I dropped it. For those of you that have done this backwards by accident before and you know that when you touch the pickup, it'll kill the guitar if it's backwards. So there you go. Yeah, you just follow that tip one around and it goes right there so let's go ahead and now this is a telly so you got to kind of think ahead here you could put it in from the outside like this but the problem is it makes it kind of stick up and it makes it hard to fit in there so you got to be careful here what you want to do is here's what I do this is I'm just going to tell you what I do it's right or wrong or whatever you want to call it whatever the internet will make up their own mind but Let's split this bad boy down. Oh, wrong. I'm out of habit reaching for my other iron. Good heat transfer on both components. And boom. And now, heat transfer on this component, on this side. And it's that easy. It's done. So when you put this in, here's, here's what I'm going to tell you what I do. Let me show you what I do. Uh, let me grab a... I have my little tester cable here. And this is what I do. I put the cable in. Now I can't, I can't install it right now because I don't have the electro socket prepared because I need to age it to make it look like the rest of the hardware. But if I had this ready to install, one of the things I would do is I'd put the plug in and I would actually put it in the guitar 
with the plug in it. That way, when it goes in, it pushes the wires where they need to go um, inside the guitar, because if they kind of bunch up or whatever, because here's what can happen. If you don't do that, what the heck? Yeah, this is part of the problem with doing this live because I can't see or feel things as much. I had a bad solder joint there. It's because I'm moving stuff too much. When, when I do this for real, I don't move around this much is the part of the problem. So what I was going to say is, it, so when you're about to put this in the guitar, what could happen is this wire could get crossed over like this, you know? And then when you go to put the plug in, it, it's in the way, and the plug won't go in there correctly. So to combat that, I actually install this with the plug in it. And then that way, when it goes into the guitar, you know everything fits. You know that there's no wires in the way. You know that you don't have any problems with, you know, with placement inside there. We're not going to put that in right now because, I, like I said, this hardware is aged with gun blacking and I needed to do an electro socket to do that. Um, so that's that. All right, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, give me one second, you're seeing the wall. And my hat on backwards. So there's some tips for soldering. No pun intended, solder tip, ha 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 ha. We could do one about cables, we could do one about, doesn't matter, it'd be fun, any which way. But that'll give you a, a good idea um, what you're looking for. Like I said, heat transfer is the biggest thing. You want one component to transfer heat to the other component. Um, as a result of that, you don't want anything to move. So you guys have seen this on my, my videos before. Um, I took a piece of door trim, I was doing some remodeling. I took a piece of door trim and I, I blew two, three holes in it. And that then becomes my Telecaster control cavity uh, template. So I can stick the pots in there. So like if I'm working on something, I can just stick the pot in there and it holds it for me so that I don't have to be fiddling around. Because if it's moving around when you're trying to work on it, that's what's gonna give you a bad solder joint. When you saw me get have that bad solder joint on that wire just now, that's why. It was because I was holding it with my hand and then when I soldered it and I wiggled my hand a little bit, that's all it took so that that heat transfer was not consistent through that joint. And then you saw me pull it back out just a minute later. So making sure that everything doesn't move is probably number one and then make sure that you have good heat transfer between components is number two also make sure that you have an alligator clip laying around so that when you do these types of joints that you cannot do damage to the other component that you're working on most everything in a guitar is pretty durable um, there are some types of pots so let's talk about that real quick. One of the reasons why at DylanTalksTone.com we are really, really favorable towards Bourne's pots over CTS, a couple reasons. One is I like the way CTS pots turn, or Bourne's pots turn. They're super smooth and super light touch. The other thing is this is your traditional vintage style CTS pot, and it's got a ball bearing in there and a shaft that comes through the middle. So as a result of that, when you heat this up and you go to, let's say this is your volume pot and you're gonna put like two or three components on here, you know, you've got all your grounds and you've got your uh, capacitor coming over from your 50s wiring, you know, you got four or five solder joints on top of this pot. You can get that thing hot repeated many, many times. That, that heat can transfer from that little shaft down to the ceramic portion of this thing that actually makes the thing work. And you can do damage to the racetrack. That's what I call it. The little where it's the contacts in there that make the pot work. So I don't like these. I mean, when you get real good at soldering, you're literally on there. Next one on there. The next one, the next one, the next one. But many times people will damage a pot 
by using these kind and then overheating the outside of this, that heat transfers through and it ruins the pot. Born's pots, on the other hand, uh, well, this is a, here, hang on. Let me find one. This is not a good example because this is a, well, here, I'll just show you. That was a no load pot and it actually has a mechanism. But see, this is a regular Borns pot. First of all, they turn super smooth and I really like that. The other thing is, is this can on the back of here, okay? So this, this back side can deal, does, it doesn't have anything to do with the circuit. There's nothing in the back of the can that touches the front of the can. So when you solder on here, you're not transferring heat to the part that does the business. As a result of that, uh, it's easier to, to work with. They're, they're just, they're better, in my opinion. I like the taper better. I like everything about them better. And if you're not real good at soldering, then these, uh, you, you don't really have a chance. I mean, everybody has a chance of burning something. But these are way less likely to do damage from, to them when you're soldering, especially when you're first learning and having, you know, heat transfer problems. Another pot that is can be a little difficult and you can have issues uh, if you use too much heat for too long is a push pull because you can melt all these little attachment points in here uh, and there's a plastic switch that ch 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 back and forth inside here and you can actually do damage to that as well. So um, these are a little bit trickier to solder on and just take a little bit more care and they, they take a good setup. What I mean by that is you want to be on and off. Like you want, you want that wire, you want that wire and that solder, you, you know, you want your, your heat to just be like pff, done. You don't want to be on it for a long time. And what happens a lot of times with people when they ruin a push pull switch like this, it's because they're trying to hold a wire in the pl in place. This is what does damage to most things. When people have the iron and they're like, okay, I need to solder two things and I only have two hands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on here I'm gonna push this against it and hold it there while I put this other wire there and then everything will stick together. But you've been on there all this time doing damage to the inside of that switch. You wanna go like this done. So the way to save these and not do damage to them is do a really good pre setup. If you want the wire to come from this direction and you want this other wire to come from this direction, get everything set up and to where it's looking and sitting exactly how you want it before you go in there to solder it. You don't have to hold it with your hands. Maybe you've got some of those little clips and stuff and you're holding it how you want it. Then you can go in there and go finalize the joint and it doesn't do damage to it. And really, that's the best result for all soldering. Fiddling and moving around like you just saw me do a minute ago is what causes bad solder joints. So if you can go in there and pre-set it all up, everything's ready, nothing's moving, you've got it kind of like, you know how sometimes you'll have to take a cap and stick it through there and like bend it to one side so it holds in firmly in place, right? And then you can go uh, like that and you're done. And you didn't do damage to anything, not too much heat, but if it's wiggling around and you're trying to hold it, so now you're on it for a long time, everything's heating up, you're doing damage to the inside of the cap. See what I'm saying? So the preparation and placement of all the components ahead of time is key to a good solder joint in general um, for all of this stuff. So that's what I would leave you with there. Uh, let's see here. Let's go through some questions. Um, do, 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 do. My buddy gave me a box of old components and I have my solder station so I'm ready to rock. Awesome. What task would you suggest for a total beginner to start practicing? Um, if you have a box of old pots, I would say, um, let's see, you'll need to desolder a lot of the components. Okay, so that's a great way. So let's say you have Right, like a bunch of stuff like this, right? Like pre-assembled stuff that's just already, right? So then what you can do 
is go ahead and make yourself a little board just like this one and let's see let's stick that in there like that so now we're holding it right now remember what we talked about about with old solder joints sometimes you have to use some, a little bit of new solder to get that heat transfer going that's what I would practice I would say let's go ahead and um, get some get some new solder and practice on the bare part of the pot that has doesn't have anything on it you know and practice that heat transfer making a little solder pool right and see how fast you can do it um, what side of the iron is most uh, successful um, how to hold the iron and at what angle to get the fastest heat transfer you can use the back of old pots to do that that's the thing that seems that most people have a problem with um, because they don't get that heat transfer right so try that first and and once you can get heat to transfer through old solder and you can desolder the back of a pot without making a huge mess and melting wires and stuff you're really on the way because that's the hardest thing actually desoldering is actually harder than soldering to tell you the truth um you know i mean that's that really is the hardest time do you hold the iron in your dominant hand I do. Um, I am left-handed. Uh, well, I write with my left hand. I do many, many, many things with my right hand. Um, but I do write with my left hand. I'm also, and many people don't know this, maybe you can see it sometimes in a video, I have a lazy eye in my right, my right eye, and so I'm actually left eye dominant also. So left side is what, what I, I do the best with. And then this, just leading in the solder, is, is fairly simple. Um, you know, so yeah, I do hold it with my left dominant. Um, it's, you're saying use flux? No. Use, here. Flux is messy. Flux just, flux is for friggin' plumbers, man. We're not plumbers. Um, this is a rosin core solder. Okay, which has flux in it. Um, there, here's a couple things I will talk about. Let's talk about solder. There's all these weird. Um, in the link to this video, it's going to be a shopping list to get all the stuff you need. This is a pound of solder. This pound lasts me six months or so, but I mean, I'm doing it like six feet of solder every day, you know, cranking through stuff. Um, it costs like 24 bucks. Don't use loose flux. Um, flux, you can if you want, but it makes a big mess. And rosin core solder does exactly the same thing. And good soldering technique does exactly the same thing. People want to get all into sanding the back of pots and they want to do all this stuff. And if you use this tip, you lay it down on three and a half, It'll get hot like that. It's learning the technique. All those things, sanding the backs of pots and, and using tons of flux and making a mess, all of that is a band-aid for, for bad technique. If you have this solder tip, you put that thing on three and a half for 40 bucks and you, you saw, it's not that hard. Um, and we could grab dirty components. We could grab a bunch of stuff. We could grab whatever you want. I mean, I could take stuff out of the trash and we could solder it together. So, um, and, and, and rosin core solder, yes, it does not make the mess of the flux, but it does exactly the same thing. Now, this brings up another point. If you're trying to solder something and you've got rosin core solder there and it's like fizzing and bubbling like Coca-Cola, um, then yeah, you've got something really, really dirty and you're not gonna get a good solder joint. Um, that usually means that you've got, you know, WD-40 or some kind of, uh, you know, pots will have some grease in them sometimes, um, really old stuff, the new stuff doesn't, but the, the old stuff will have some grease in it or somebody will have put grease in it or, or WD-40 or some crap that you don't wanna use on your guitar, don't use that stuff. Um, we do not have WD-40 in the shop at all, ever 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 don't get it around your guitars don't use it on your fretboards don't do any of the stuff they tell you to do with the guitars don't put it in your shop um if you do that you won't have any problem soldering 
But the the rosin core, there's just enough in there that it doesn't make a mess, but it does the same job as flux without having that issue. There's going to be some tone freaks that are going to say, well, don't use 60-40 solder like that. Use the 78-30, whatever, whatever it is, 70-30, whatever it is. There's some other with silver in it and all that junk. It's just a bunch of crap. It's a bunch of tone heads wanting to sound smarter because they found something more obscure. It's all it really. It's like the hipster of tone um, wanting to be more obscure. This is going to be just fine. People have been using it for a long time. This is really high quality stuff. And I use, if you're going on Amazon, um, in that list, I put the specific uh, diameter, but I use point. 0.031 inch solder. You can get 2.2, which is very, very thin. You can get really, really thick stuff. I've found that this to be a good balance so that you have a nice, healthy speed of without making a mess. But I've also found that it is not so thick uh, that it doesn't make a mess, but it's not so thin that you're literally like having to feed like feet into something when you're soldering it. Um, that especially comes true when I'm making guitar cables. I go through probably, oh my gosh, when we started building guitar cables here, that's really when we upped our game on how much solder we use. Uses a lot of solder. Um, oh, you just, so we just covered that. So 0 0.031, that's what I use. Um, tip cleaner on the list. Oh, you know what? I need to put that on the list. That is exactly what I need to put on the list. I use the Peco brass stuff. I probably should get a new one. I just take it out, dump it in the trash, because here's what it does. It captures, oh, of course I can't tip it up. See it? It captures all the solder. And then you just clean it out in the trash, fluff it up. You gotta replace it every once in a while. I probably should replace it more than I do, but I don't think about it when it's working. You just got your head down soldering all day, you don't think about it. See, boom, good, it's new, six bucks. Every, some people wanna use water on a sponge, um, but I find that that ages your tips faster. Um, it makes your tips wear out more quickly. So, and I need my tips to be on because I solder tons and tons and tons. Um, the other thing is ventilation. You don't want to be breathing this stuff. Now, in the videos, sometimes you'll see me um, with full smoke all over the place because in videos, I don't want to have a fan going. What I have right here is my shop air conditioner, and so it creates, because of the way the, in, the, the way it works, I have like a nice little going right here on my desk because of where the air conditioner is it works awesome and i have a 30 inch ceiling fan right there too so we have a nice little kind of wind tunnel going here where i'm not breathing it now in videos sometimes i'm going to be breathing it because you know i want those fans off so that you have better audio and stuff so you know there is that but most of the time i don't breathe it so awesome man this has been really fun what do we talk about next week that's what I want to know. Uh, for those of you that are just hanging out still, what do we want to talk about next week? Because I don't have anything yet. Uh, I don't have anything quite yet. What should we talk about next week? You guys should blow up these comments for me and tell me. For some reason, the way they've changed this chat thing is harder for me to find stuff. Next week, more soldering. What do you want to know about lace sensors? That's what I want to know. Fret dressing, man. We could talk about fret dressing, but I, I will tell you that I... I do not profess to be an awesome fret guy. My, now, my guitars, when they leave here, are good. But that doesn't mean that I am really good at it. That just means that I spend a lot of time <laughs> getting them right. 
<laughs> so, um, it, I, I spend too much time getting them right. And I will tell you that I am not, I am not a proficient boom, 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 going through fret work. I'm not that guy. I'm literally, it's cumbersome for me. It is one area that's, I, I, they're perfect. They're great. They feel good, but they take a long time to get there. Um, let's see. Um, so lace sensors are their own thing. No, people cannot make them. They are patented. The way the technology works, they're, I don't have any to take apart to show you. You can actually just Google how they are made. They're a weird shell of a magnet with a coil inside. Um, I can't stand them, to tell you the truth. So I don't really have a ton of interest in them. Best clean pickups. Um, schematics. Um, yeah, we could talk schematics. We could do, we could do that. Um, put in the comments below what schematics you want to talk about, and I will point you to some good ones. Um, there's a couple of online resources that are really good for schematics. That's why I haven't spent a lot of time on it. Um, because they're the same ones I use. I literally Google when I when somebody texts me and says, "Hey, can you build this?" I'm like, "I know the theory. I know how it's supposed to work. I know how the signal's supposed to get from there to there. Super simple. Uh, when you add a feature, okay, what does it do? And then I go and I Google a schematic and make sure that my brain says what I think is right. And then I Google a couple more schematics to make sure that backs up. I got a buddy of mine that's really good at wiring, so I call him and say, "Hey." You think this idea will work? And he'll say, yeah, but you might have a pop or a snap when you click the switch. If you did this, it'll fix it. You know, so schematics are, are literally for really weird wiring stuff. It's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a crapshoot. Yeah. And Seymour Duncan does. So does, um, what's that other one? There's a couple. I'll, I'll post a couple of links for some good resources. Cause yeah. Um, yeah, we could build cables. Yeah, well, actually, <laughs> I just had an order come in. I have to make 24 six inch patch cables with pancake jacks and I have to make 30 20 foot guitar cables for one customer. <laughs> so I have a lot of guitar cables to make. So we will, let's talk about guitar cables next week. That'd be awesome. Be awesome. If you guys need anything, if you need pots, if you need caps, if you need anything to solder with, if you need hookup wire, if you need um, pre-made stuff like we talked about, uh, please hit hit me up at dylantalkstone.com because you know obviously we sell all this stuff, and this is the real way that I make a living, <laughs> not making videos. So um, please please uh, do me a favor and and support our stuff. That would be awesome because that's what really keeps us going and keeps the lights on so i really appreciate all your support as well as if you use those amazon links i make five cents or something it's not a lot but you know it, it, like i said it, in this day and age people always wonder like how you how do you make it in the music business well you you do a little of this and a little of that and a few cents come from there and a few cents come from there and you put it all together and you make a living but it takes sharing and helping and supporting each other and the community and I tell you I really really appreciate the fact that everybody does support what we do so um yeah okay so okay I see what you're saying so um just just another vet he asks um even talking about pot lugs what wire goes where that sort of stuff um we could go over very simple wiring so that when you look at a wiring harness like like this um you know like let's say let's say you're new to this um for a very beginner or somebody who's just starting and they look in there which one of these is the tone pot and which one is the volume pot and how do you make a volume pot into a tone pot and vice versa what is the differences we could talk about that as well um you know this one over here is the tone pot this one over here is the volume pot <laughs> Um, but they're actually interchangeable. We could use, it doesn't matter which one, right? And then there's a couple other 
pots that you can't use for a volume pot. And there's a couple things like that. So yeah, we could talk about that. That sounds very, very cool. Next week, we're gonna do guitar cables. The week after that, um, we will do, we'll do some basic wiring. This is awesome. Um, I really appreciate everybody's support. Thanks for hanging out. Do me a favor and share these videos. This is what keeps us going, is you all sharing what we do. So I really appreciate it. And uh, this has been super fun. Thanks for coming to At The Bench with Dylan Talks Tone. If you have any other ideas for videos, put them in the comments. This has been really great. Share these videos. Thanks for being part of the community. And we will talk to you all uh, next week.